All right, here's another variation of the H bridge. I rewired it. Um, I left the one CD4093 in it. It's using a single CD4093, except I can't cut it on. I can't cut the motor on and off and tri-state it like the earlier model. This one, you're just pretty well on, or you're pretty well off, and that's it. So this, this item can't be tri-stated. In an earlier video, I demonstrated how to use an in-channel MOSFET, such as a 2N7000. It's a TO92 small signal MOSFET transistor. And I used a CD4093 as a CMOS inverter to drive a MOSFET transistor. Now we're going to evolve to a higher level from this basic circuit that allowed me to interface a low voltage microcontroller easily to a higher voltage H-bridge circuit. All right, here we are back again. Here is a simplified H-bridge circuit. I used a CD4093, it's a CMOS part. It consists of four two input NAND gates with Schmidt trigger inputs. I only needed three of the four and whatever gates you're not using, you need to tie the inputs to ground and so forth. In this case, we have up on the upper half here, we will call this the A circuit or an A out, the lower, Half will be the B circuit and B out. I have tied both inputs together with a connection I call direction. Up here, you need to note the little asterisk. What this means is this connection goes to the power supply bus of your microcontroller. In the case of a 5 volt Arduino, it connects to 5 volts. If you are operating this with a Raspberry Pi, which has 3.3 volt IOs, you must connect this to the 3 volt bus connection. Let's look a little closer at each half of the H-bridge circuit. This is the non-inverting upper half. What this means is a high on the input here is going to be high here It'll be low here, and it'll switch on the P-channel MOSFET, giving me high out. So 3 or 5 volts here is going to give me 12 volts output to this motor. And vice versa. A low here is going to be a low there. It's going to be a high output. It'll switch on the in-channel MOSFET and switches the motor to ground. Let's move down a little bit. This circuit down here is going to have the opposite polarity because I dropped in an extra inverter. So while a high here will give you a high out up here, it will be inverted. This will be high to high to low to high. It switches on the in channel and B out will be low. So that's how it works. It has a single input. You, you're either going forward or reverse, no matter what you do. Let's move down and look at a truth table. Here's your truth table as your direction pin. If it's a high, A out will be 12, B out will be 0. It'll go in the forward mode. A low end is going to give me a 0 out on A out. 12 volts on B out, and it's going to be in reverse. We can go a little more sophisticated than this because the problem with this particular circuit is um, it's on all the time. If you have a way of switching the power on and off, that's fine. But if you don't, you need to get a little more complicated. All right, on this second circuit variation, everything is nearly the same. You will tie the uh, gate resistors back to the VCC of the microcontroller, be it 3 volts or 5 volts, depending on if it's a Arduino or, say, a uh, Raspberry Pi. 
but I have separated the inputs into A and B, A corresponding to A out, B corresponding to B out. The advantage is it isn't just forward and reverse. I have four modes. Let's look down at your truth. We have a truth table below. Let's blow this up a bit so we can see it a little easier. All right. If input A is high and B is low, A out is going to be 12. B out is going to be 12. It's going to be in the stop mode. It's like you've connected both sides of the motor to plus VCC. All right. If we have a high input on A and a high input on B, A is going to have 12 volts. B is going to have zero volts, thus the motor again is going to go forward or clockwise, depending on how you wired up the motor. Let's go again. If we have a low on A and a high on B, it's going to be zero and zero. This is the brake mode. It's like it switches both sides of the motor connections to ground. And finally, low input A and low input B. It's going to be 0 volts on A. It's going to be 12 volts on B out and it's going to be in reverse. And that's pretty much it. Um, you will not get shoot through because uh, these Smith trigger inputs will pretty well assure uh, that you won't have a shoot through problem because it'll switch quick and clean and like I said, it uses a single CD4093, two input MOSFETs, or two N7000s is what I use. And of course, your output circuit is 12 volts, and this ties back into a 3 or 5 volt circuit. That's all I can say about this. Works well. You saw, it in the, you saw a variation of it in the video at the beginning. Um, and the schematic is up on my website, so if you would, I'd appreciate hit hit the like button. Visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com. Have a great day.